Okay, well, welcome to the Mendota Ranch. What we're doing today is uh, flushing an embryo out of this mare, we hope. So, this is my catheter I've got stuck in there. Now we're attaching a Y to you. Alright, so if you don't know what we're doing here, we're, um, we're flushing this mare. Uh, we bred her about eight days ago. So, we bred her and then she ovulated seven days ago. So now we're gonna flush the embryo out of her. The reason we're flushing this mare is, she's a, number one, she's a great mare, but she'd injured herself, stop, she uh, hurt her stifle. We shipped in semen for a metallic cat. That's yeah, a big time stud, 10, 15,000 on stud feet. So we've got another reset mare lined up for this. So what, what I'm gonna do is kind of run you through the process of how we actually flush the mare. So I've got the catheter in there. So the catheter goes in there, we blow the balloon up just past the cervix, so it's, it's pulled up against the cervix. And we'll fill the fluid up full of flush fluid. And then with this wide tube, I'll run it back down. It'll run through this uh, filter. And so this is a filter right here. So we've created a vacuum in this filter and there's a screen in the bottom of this filter right here that will catch the embryo. So Carlos will run it back and forth and I'll, I'll work it, uh, the uterus back and forth. So, all right, so here we go. Let's get you close. So after we run these fluids back and forth in and out, then we will uh, we'll go in there and look under the microscope. This this filter that I use now is newer than what we used to use like 20 years ago. This one actually has a grid dish in it, so I don't have to dump it into a bowl and you know handle it anymore. Have to, so I just use the same dish. <laughs> about getting all the um, fluid out the first time. It's the last flush is where I really get aggressive and get it all out. And it's mainly just because I don't want to, you know, irritate it and get a bunch of trash in my screen. So that screen will catch any kind of trash coming out of the uterus. So like if you got some old semen or whatever, you know, any kind of trash and infection, it'll catch it all. But it should catch the embryo if we got one. So here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. So, when you're breeding a mare, say February through the middle of April, the odds of getting an embryo, about 30%. After April 15th, it jumps to about 50%, maybe a little more. Of course, it varies from mare to mare, but just I'm just saying over the over, over all the mares average, it's 50%. I would say we got less than 50% chance with this mare. Number one, it was shipped in semen, so it wasn't fresh semen. Number two, the mare has an injury and they they let her try to carry a foal and obviously it didn't go well for this mare so she's still kind of in the recovery phase phase i would say we got a 25 percent chance of catching the embryo uh, she cycled good we bred her good we nailed her so um, it was good so essentially how it works is she comes in the heat we order semen on thursday i give her a shot to make her ovulate on friday night um, we get the semen in on Friday morning and we transfer, she fr ovulates Friday night, Saturday morning. And here it is Saturday uh, morning, we're flushing her a week later. So we go from the day she ovulates. We checked her Monday morning, I mean uh, Saturday morning. So we checked her Saturday morning, she'd ovulated, so we wait a week. In between there, what we did is we set up a recipient mare. So we've got, went out and got a recipient mare, which a recipient mare, you know, it's just a killer mare that's gentle and nice and we just repurpose them. So she will carry the embryo for this mare. She's gonna be the surrogate mom. So we had her ovulate on Monday. So she ovulated on Thursday, the recept ovulated on Monday. I like for the recept to ovulate a couple days after the donor. Starting around three. We've got 
two flushes done. We're gonna go again. So the purpose of an embryo transfer is we can get the mare to um, carry, you know, we get four or five foals out of the mare in one year. You know, instead of just one or one every, you know, two to one every other year or whatever you're doing. So, you know, when you got these really valuable mares, it's nice to be able to breed these mares to four or five different studs. And, you know, like a mare like this, I mean, she probably, even though she's stifled, she's probably worth 100,000. The owner of this mare, I know he's, he's sold, he's sold, you know, I think a foal, maybe two, you know, for a couple hundred thousand out of this old mare. So, you know, she's a good mare. And this is the kind of marriage you want to be doing embryo transfers out of. Now, back when I started doing embryo transfers back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, I mean, we are kind of the only game in town. And now, everybody and their dog and cat does embryo transfers, and they're charging, you know, half what we charged, you know, 25 years ago. 20 years ago, for sure. So, you know, back in 2000, we were getting, you know, 5,000 an embryo. That included the reset mare now, and I think now you can go get one done for, you know, $2,500. So that's why I'm kind of out of the game. I sold my business because, you know, 20 years ago, things were a lot cheaper, and now things are a lot more expensive. And if you can't do it, you know, if you're doing it for half the business, like, <clears throat> I'm out. If you hadn't noticed, I'm short a cameraman. So right now, the horse is my cameraman. It's working pretty good, I think. So there's a few things we can do, you know, to get more embryos. You can do embryo transfer, which, uh, you know, that's just breed the mare, flush the embryo. You can also do ICSI. ICSI's been around for quite a while. It seems to be a lot better now than what it, what it was. And ICSI is where we actually just go in there and aspirate the uh, oocytes from the ovary itself on the mare. So you can go aspirate, you know, 10, 20 oocytes per mare. It's very expensive and isn't quite as successful. So, I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, some mares you could use, you hit a home run, you get 10, 15 embryos out of one mare. And then what other mares, older mares, you don't get any, and you might have a $150,000 bill the time you're done. Yeah. Round four, last one. All right, so on this one here, once we're all done, get the uterus completely drained, and we'll be done with this part. And then we'll, once we get an embryo, we'll move to the recipient mare. Everything's going good though. Smooth, smooth flush. Looking nice. All right, this is, so this is the last flush. So before we start, I'm gonna go in there and lavage the uterus. Make sure I've got all that fluid up and down all the horns. Okay, so what I did there is I just worked it. I made sure, you know, I just kind of milked the horns out. Made, I got all the fluid out. So now we gotta take the air out of the catheter. I'm gonna drain the hoses. Let's go see if we got an embryo. So now we've got the the uh, filter here on the scope. There's no big hurry. You kind of let, kind of got to let everything kind of settle. Let all the embryos, the embryo settle down. So this is the filter over here. Then that's a grid. So the grid kind of guides us as we go. So I'm just kind of the embryo is kind of slow to float down to the bottom. So just give me the minute here. A lot of times you can see that you know if it's a day eight embryo, you can see it with your naked eye. Even day seven, but hopefully we got day seven in here. Got one, got a day seven. So we're good to go. So I'm gonna see if I can. So we got a day seven embryo here. So uh, let me see if I can grab my phone there and see if I can film it. It's in a lot of trash right now. So um, I want you to be able to see the trash. Uh, I don't know if you will do or not, but what, I'll, what I'm gonna do is we'll clean it up, okay? So, so let me show you how we'll, we'll take, take this. And this is the same fluid <clears throat> that we flush the mare with. And what I do is I I let it sit out. So, so we, we warm everything up in the incubator before we start. And then once you start, don't put it back in the incubator because you don't want the temperature, of, you don't want the embryo to have to go up and down and down and up, you know. So you want to just have it just, just kind of a constant uh, room temperature or whatever, it's, you know, it's 80 degrees here. So, don't put these back in in the um, incubator because what you do you'd have like an 80 degree water and then you come grab these out and then you throw that embryo from 80 degrees to 100 degrees well you you just freaking 
you know, you know, probably will kill you in real, but it can't be good for it. And then I run it through a, a sterile filter. So this filter on the ends is sterile. So it makes sure everything in, from this point on was sterile. Okay, so I'm just gonna use another straw to load my embryo. So I gotta get around a bunch of trash. So since I'm just flicking the trash out of the way, I'm loading my embryo. I'm gonna transfer it over here. There we go, nice and gentle, no more trash in there. Okay. So I've got, I got four wells here. I got one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna, in that fourth well, I'm gonna let the embryo sit while I go get the reset mirror ready. And then once the reset mirror is ready, then I'll come back and we'll load it, okay? So let's move it. So you have pretty steady hands here. Rolling the embryo up, back down, let it sit for a minute. Okay, pull this one away. Okay, zoom in on it. I'm gonna get you, try to get y'all a picture of it. Okay, we'll see if I can get a picture. Okay, let's load this embryo. So, got a straw. I buy these hot dollar straws for my embryo. So we don't want to touch, you know, this end. We, won't, we can touch up here. Okay. All right, so let's look at our embryo. It still looks good. So here's what I'm gonna do. You see that pocket of fluid? I'm gonna put a little pocket of air. Okay. Next one's gonna have the embryo in it. That's got the embryo in it. Have the pocket of air. See that? Fluid, air, fluid with the embryo. Then I'll finish it off. Okay, so I got it all the way to the cotton swab. Now, now we load it in the gun like this. Don't don't touch the end. Okay, trying to do this without screwing it up in front of the camera or something. Okay. So this is gonna sleeve side delivery pipette. So we lock it in place like this. Kind of lock her down like that. Then bring this in more tight. Okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through the cervix into the uterus and we're gonna be sneaky about it. All right, next step. Okay, when you lube, get your first squat, squirt, out on the ground, because it's always contaminated. Not that we're sterile, but you know, what I'm gonna do. Here's the deal, I'm gonna start in, I'm gonna go in vaginally, and start to send the cervix, and I'm gonna come out rectally, and fix the cervix however I want it to get this down into the uterus where I want it, okay? All right, so now I'm in, my pipette's in the cervix about two inches. Now I'm going in rectally. And I'm straightening the cervix up. That's what I did. So I started to bend the cervix a little bit, about to there. And I went in rectally and I, and I fixed the cervix like I wanted. I got to the very end of the cervix and it looked like there was a little bit of scar tissue on the cervix. Had to kind of work around it. And then once I got in there and then I got into the uterus and I put it just right where I wanted it. And I deposit it and give it a little little spin like that. So just a little spin. There we go. Okay, so that was the day seven embryo. So three days later, we'll come back and we'll check this mare and see if he's pregnant. We'll see. All right, let's go. Stay tuned. We will be back in three days. Okay, so let's see if she's pregnant. Okay, that's the start of the uterus. That's the bladder underneath it. Yep, there it is. All right, you see the little round circle, right? Right there. See that? Right there. Right there. Good, nice, round, good-looking day 10 embryo. Okay. Good job. Okay, so here's the recap. Um, so, the, uh, the donor mare... We knew it was um, going to be, it was coming in heat on Wednesday. We ordered the semen, me metallic cat. They shipped it on, a, on Thursday. We received it on Friday. So FedEx shipped it. We bred her on Friday. Of course, we gave her a shot of Desrelin, um, you know, just to make her ovulate within about 30, 40 hours after the shots. Then she ovulated sometime uh, Friday night after we'd bred her. And, um, so Saturday morning when we caught her, we saw she had ovulated. So that's the same time for Saturday morning. We also went out and got us a reset mare, gave her a shot of Desirelin. And she, when we checked her uh, Monday morning, she had ovulated. So we knew that the reset mare is a couple, a day and a half behind 
the donor mare. So then the following Saturday, we flush the donor mare. We, we uh, recover a day seven embryo, high quality, very good. We transfer it into the reset mare. We knew the reset mare had a little bit of uh, scar tissue in the cervix. We kind of gently got by it and I transferred it. And then I just checked the mare now. Today's Tuesday. So it was a day 10 uh, pregnancy. Looks good. You know, a day 10 is pretty small. Uh, but hopefully you saw that on the ultrasound. And so that that's pretty much wraps up a embryo transfer. So there you go. There's embryo transfer in a nutshell as fast as I can wrap it up. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Follow me on Instagram on the Mendota Ranch. And thanks for commenting. All right. See you later.